introduce you to this amazing plant. It's called skunk cabbage. First of all, we'll look into natural inhabitant and try to gather the root system of this plant. So let's take a look how it looks like in a natural inhabitant. This is the natural environment for skunk cabbage. It has this uh, name from, uh, it got this name from uh, the flower that usually, right now it's already all bloom, but it has this yellow flowers that they kind of open up and has distinct kind of stinky smell, <laughs> skunk smell. And uh, the only reason why it has such a strong odor is to attract as many insects as possible so to po help to pollinate those plants. The natural environment for those plants is kind of swampy, wet, a little bit the darker area of the woods, but it has to be lots of water. So you can see here's a little stream going through and uh, this meadow has soft soil, so it's uh, really saturated. So it's kind of almost like a swampy area here. Uh, people have been using root system in the regular daily base. Uh, cook it, you need to boil it, and you could eat it. could eat stems. Um, the leaves, mostly women used to use for like for rolls and stuff just roll it up and then they cook it and then you remove it and can eat what you cooked uh, inside uh, but basically the root system especially in springtime you could eat also leaves but uh, during the whole year mostly roots and the stems you could eat <coughs> safely just boil it Yep, it's definitely <laughs> very saturated soil here, ground. Also, the leaves, as you can see, they are quite shiny. We've got natural wax in them. So you can uh, try to get the wax out and make your own natural wax, uh, maybe candles and such, or make some creams out of that. Haven't tried myself, but today, I want to try to gather some roots of this plant. It's unbelievably useful for medicinal purposes. It's not uh, uh, admitted by the uh, medicine right now. So it's uh, been mostly used uh, for native people for several generations. The root of skank cabbage been primarily used for asthma, bronchitis, coughs, whipping coughs. Also, it's been used for pains, for joint pains, headaches, toothaches. In some cases, been saying that it helps with nerve system, with people who got seizures, epilepsy, and some other nerve disorders. They've been using also skunk cabbage. Basically, you could gather the root, dry it at home, maybe uh, uh, cut it up uh, so it's easily can be used afterwards. And then you use the dry powder, just maybe grind it in the blender, it can add to your food supply, but uh, safely to use like tea, as the tea. So you have to use uh, some thermal temperature so boil it a little bit uh, with, with water and then you can drink it as a regular tea uh, since it uh, contains this poison that you cannot use raw they do say after drying uh, that poison kind of evaporates disappears but on be on a safe side I would still use the hot water so when you, as you make the tea you could just the same way make uh, your medicine from the root of this plant so we're going to gather some of the roots and see how they look like so i'm trying to for the first time in my life try to get a younger one so usually it's easier to 
collect uh, the older ones that have much stronger root system and then let's see how we can do that all right guys after hard work i was able to gather the root system the root uh, itself and all the strings being used for medicinal purposes like i mentioned earlier it's pretty hard to get uh, the leaves and the top part of the plant easily can be uh, taken even by hand but the root system i would suggest you probably should take some kind of a digging tool even that is pretty hard the, the thing is uh, soil is very saturated it is a swampy area so when you try to gather and this uh, they are they're amazing <laughs> these are like little monsters they just uh, go all over the place and uh, they are holding on to the root and spraying all over and just uh, really hard to get so this is the best i could do was uh, a plant so now the root system what you do you wash it well i would keep even uh, this uh, tinier root roots uh, and dry it you would uh, cut it up right away and uh, just uh, dry it in the sunshine or uh, inside the house uh, mostly uh, herbs they suggest to dry away from the sunshine but i think the root system doesn't suffer from that but in any case uh, just uh, uh, try the way you do your herbs so for several days until it's completely uh, dried out then you can uh, do through the coffee grinder or just leave pieces and uh, make your herbal tea there are no con um, dos uh, doses that uh, suggested for using this herb or consult your doctor if you already have any problems with your health uh, since it's pretty potent um, as a side effect uh, uh, it gives you nausea headaches if you use it too much diarrhea and for people who got already kidney stones uh, they suggest the warning you not to take it because it has this calcium oxide that uh, forms the kidney stones and when you take this herb it might provoke uh, to form kidney stones in your system so be aware of that but for people uh, who have occasional uh, like if you have a whooping cough or, or some lung problems so you could use that uh, as a temporarily uh, release of your pains uh, headaches rheumato uh, joint pains uh, um, again ask your doctor ask your uh, national natural path if you have one how you can combine your other herbs your other medicine with this uh, unique plan um, they do suggest uh, you could eat this white part, the stem. It's pretty soft. Uh, uh, you know, it almost reminds you of leek, you know, so you can just cut it up, uh, cook it as you regularly steam it, uh, boil it, whatever you want to do. And these are like, I have smaller pieces, uh, almost like onions they look like. Uh, but yes. Uh, strongly suggest to use uh, uh, cooked if you're going to use as a food um, do not take it raw otherwise you can have upset stomach and nausea and vomiting and not pleasant uh, at the same time this herb in small amounts also stimulates uh, um, appetite so for people who lost their appetite so they could uh, try this in some cases people claim it uh, cures even cancers uh, so it uh, helps with seizures uh, uh, with um, nerve system disorders uh, and all kind of headaches and snake bites so apparently it also helps with snake bites uh, no wonder it's in a swampy area and if some kind of snake uh, Beaten you so you could uh, use this plant to uh, release uh, that poison so it helps uh, to as you can see the leaves are pretty amazing the leaves they suggest if you want to use in uh, cooking 
only in springtime then they are the freshest right now they look a bit old and worn out and lots of uh, uh, yellow spots uh, and in some area when it's drying out uh, the, the leaves already also as you can see like getting darker uh, so the leaves better use uh, early in springtime when they're just coming out and uh, this is an amazing plant lots of great health benefits again moderate I've been watching some other uh, herbs that has uh, poison for example uh, scot scotch broom and so on that helps with uh, water retention and so on and they suggest no more than one tablespoon of dry substance a day so basically you make a strong uh, type of tea with uh, the dry herb and then uh, kind of for one tablespoon about uh, uh, one or even two cups of uh, hot water you even could boil for, for a minute or two then turn it off let it sit for an hour so let it absorb the water or all those nutrients and then kind of sift it through remove access of that herb and take the liquid uh, uh, before each meal so or twice a day uh, and no more than um, you know just take a teaspoon and three times a day so don't overdo it and again try small amount if you feel that uh, it disagrees with you just stop taking it but um, otherwise great <laughs> great herb to try if you just want to prevent certain diseases and I thank you for stay, uh, <laughs> staying with me and see you next time. Bye!